subarray sums 1. So we are given an array of n positive integers and our task is to count the number of subarrays having sum x. The first line of input contains two integers, n and x, n being the size of the array, and x our target sum. And then the second line contains n integers, a1 through an. And n can be as large as 2 times 10 to the fifth, while x and ai can be as large as a billion. We have an example here. We have an array of size 5 and our target is 7 and the answer in this case is 3. So let's go to the drawing board and see why this answer is 3 and try to come up with a solution. So this is our example. We could notice that the answer here would be 3 because the sum of this interval is 7, 2 plus 4 plus 1. The sum of this interval is also 7. And finally, 7 by itself gives us a sum of 7. And there are no other intervals that would uh, sum up to 7. So let's try to approach this problem. Uh, let's think of a naive approach. Like the first thing to, that comes to mind is that we are trying to find uh, the sum, the number or the number of subarrays that sum up to x. Okay, so here we need, so we need to find some subarrays that fulfill this condition. So why don't we go through all subarrays? And how can we do that? In order to, an to answer that question, we need to ask ourselves what defines a subarray. A subarray can be defined by a left border and a right border, like in this case and it is implicitly stated that the right border has to be equal or larger than the left border and the same applies here like the left border here and this is the right border here um, this is the left border and this is the right border okay and how could we go through all the borders this could be could be achieved by with the two nested loops, we could do something like for i equals zero, i less than n, i plus plus, and for j equals i plus one. As we said, the right border has to be strictly larger than the left border, j less than n, j plus plus. Okay. So this way we will go through all subarrays and here we need to check for this condition. We need to check that the sum is equal to x. And how can we do that? Like if we say that this is our i and this is our j, then we need to sum all elements in this, in this range. So in order to do that, we would need another for loop. So for x equals i, x less than or equal to, or strictly less, so x should be less than j. So x less than j, x plus plus. We would declare like some variable here like ll sum equals zero and here we would increment sum by the value of ax uh, let me use some other variable here not to confuse it with this x so let's say we have h here like h less than j h plus plus and sum we increment sum by ah 
and here we check if sum equals x then we would increment our answer that we called cnt for count by one okay so this is a naive algorithm and let's think about its complexity so what is the complexity of this algorithm so we have a for loop here and another for loop here and inside these for loops there is another for loop so since we have three nested for loops the complexity here would be n cubed so the complexity of this algorithm would be n cubed which is very bad since n can be as large as 10 uh, as 10 to the fifth then the total complexity would be something like 10 to the 15th which is way larger than our threshold or of 10 to the 7th 10 to the 8th so this wouldn't work but we could improve this algorithm like we could get rid of this for loop here with something like uh, prefix sums Uh, prefix sums are a way of computing the sum of some range here like I could uh, we first we do some pre-processing first like in this case I would start by going through my array and doing the following I just bring the first value as it is then this second value would be this value right here plus the previous value so 4 plus 2 is 6 1 plus 6 is 7 7 plus 2 is 9 and 9 plus 7 is 16 okay so if I wanted to know uh, the value of this range and here for convenience we always start our array with 0 so if I wanted to know the sum of this range right here the range in purple the the sum would be simply this value minus the value that preceded the beginning of my interval so it would be 7 minus 0 which is 7 if I want the sum of this range it would be 9 minus the value that preceded this interval which is 2 so it would be 9 minus 2 which is also 7 as we stated if I wanted the value of just these two values, it would be 7 minus 2, which is 5, exactly like this. So if we pre-compute our prefix sums, we could do this in O of n, and then we could just get rid of this for loop right here. And instead, we would just check like pref of uh, j, it would be j yes pref of j minus pref of a of i minus one and we would see if this is equal to x that if it's the case we would increment our counter otherwise we will just proceed so and this can be uh, computed in o of one because it is just looking up a value and uh, making a subtraction here so that way our complexity now is just we are we just have two for loops and what's inside here is just is of order o of one so we would have o of n times o of n times o of one so we brought down our complexity to o of n squared using prefix sums but but this is still not enough because as we said n can be as large as 10 times as 10 to the fifth so n squared would be in, of order 10 to the 10th which is way larger than our threshold of 10 to the 8th 10 to the 7th so that's not enough and and the next idea that would come to mind is instead of going through all sub arrays we could use a, a, print, a, a technique called sliding window we could instead of like every time we increment i if i starts here then j would go through all these values 
then we move I here, then J would start again from here and move, move through all these values. So for each movement of I, J keeps going through all the values and going back. Like we need to get rid of this for loop. And in order to do that, I and J should always keep moving in the same direction. Like they should never get decremented. That's the case for I. I is always increasing, but J, after each uh, incrementation of I, gets reset to I plus 1. It gets all the way up to N minus 1, and then it gets reset to I plus 1, which is no good. So this idea of a sliding window is simply... Uh, let me copy my example here. Like we have 2, 4, 1... Two, seven. We would just start our I here and J right here. And we keep we keep incrementing I as long our as our sum is less than X. So here I is at this position, so our sum is two. So we increment I to here, so our sum becomes six. It is still less than x, so we increment i here. Now our sum is 7. And since our sum is greater or equal to 7, we, we check if it is actually equal to 7, and the answer is yes. So our count is incremented by 1. And then uh, we, we increase j. When we move j, like there is no point in moving i any further, we already got to our goal. Increasing i would only make the sum greater than 7, but we don't want any sum that is larger than 7. So what we do is we would increase j instead. So now i is here and j was here, so we would increment it to here. And since we incremented it, like this two is not part of our uh, subarray anymore, so we need to take it away from this seven. So our actual sum now is five, and it is less strictly less than seven, so we need to increment i. So we bring i here, so this would increment this by seven. Oh, oh. so our sum is again greater than or equal to seven, so we check if it is equal to 7 and the answer is yes. So in, we increment our count by 1. So we have 2 hits so far. And since our sum is greater than or equal to 7, this means that we need to move our j again. So we move j over here. So j moves to here. And as we said, since this 4 is not part of our sum anymore, so we need to take it away from this 7. So our sum becomes 3. Okay, so now we move i. We move i over here. So now our sum becomes 10. It is greater than or equal to 7, but it is not equal to 7, so we don't increment our count. But what we have to do, there is no point in moving i, so we just move j. So we're gonna move j over here. And this one is not part of our, our array anymore, so this becomes 9. And it is still larger than 7, so we have to move it once again. So we move j right here, so this 2 is not part of our interval anymore, so our sum is 7. And we check if it is actually equal to 7, and the answer is yes, so our count gets another hit. And uh, then, since it is still larger than or equal to 7, we would move j, but there is no, no position to move j to, because it's already at position n minus 1. So we just stop here, and that way we get our answer, and the answer is 3. But what you noticed here is that i and j only move in one direction, they never go back. So how many positions will i visit? 
n and how many positions will j visit n and these two are independent like they move separately like there is no uh, j does not get reset when i moves so the total complexity would be n plus n which is of 2n which is of n and this is perfect because it is like solving the problem in linear time as a reminder this technique is called sliding window and it is precisely uh, like having a window that we want and we just keep uh, tweaking its boundaries to make it fit some condition and this technique helps reduce the complexity of quadratic uh, approaches like uh, approaches that are n square and reduce them to become linear so that's pretty much it now let's check out the code so this is our code We'll start by reading uh, n and x. Then we will declare a vector of int that will store our values. We will look through the values and read them. Then we will declare our three variables, uh, i, j, and sum. And as we said, we will have a while loop. We will also need count to keep uh, track of uh, the intervals that match our sum. Then we will have a while loop, so we will keep incrementing i as long as it is less than n. And after each time, as we did, we will increment sum by values of i. And we would keep doing that unless the sum we have so far is, is greater than or equal to x. So if the sum is greater than or equal to x, then we need to move j. But first, we need to check whether or not sum is equal to x. And if it is equal to x, then we have to increment count. Otherwise, uh, uh, and in both cases, I mean, we'll just take away the value of j from sum and increment j. And if the sum, uh, and otherwise, we'll also, like when we get out of this loop, we'll increment i. This is precisely what we described on the drawing board. And at the very end, we will just print our answer. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.